What's the best way to deal with ticks? It really is. It's that time of year. As summer is approaching, more and more riders are trail riding, and trails mean ticks. I always find them on my horse, and I'm not sure about proper removal. How should we treat the wound after pulling the tick out? Any good prevention tactics? My horse gets nasty swollen bites. Any Smart Pack supplements or products to help? Um, fun fact, when I was looking this up, because I don't, where I live, I don't have a lot of ticks, so I had to look uh, some stuff. I used to. This feels like bragging. I, I <laughs> used to. Um, ticks have been around for 100 million years, and they think that they probably preyed on the dinosaurs. So T-Rex was walking around with his little arms, and he couldn't get ticks, because he got Can you imagine how much grosser Jurassic Park would have been? With ticks. And it's just, just combining. You're like, wait, stop, I have to pick a tick off. Dino so. DNA. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> um, ticks, um, let's talk about, I guess, prevention first, and then okay. we'll get to removal and, yeah. and all that. So Prevention the, is the first step, it, ideally. Yeah, yeah, that's the ideal thing, because ticks um, can pass along a variety of, of really bad diseases, Lyme disease and anaplasmosis and there's some other ones, but they all depend on the part of the country. And also, the kind of tick you're dealing with, it ranges in different parts of the country. And um, in general, though, they, they like the same habitat. They like um, a shady, out of the sun, a little bit damp, mm -hmm. nice humidity, um, sort, of, sort of a brushy overgrowth kind of area. Like a trail. Like a trail. <laughs> like a trail. Like exactly like, like a, a trail. trail. <laughs> yeah. They like trees, they don't like open, pastures or just of grass yeah. so so the first thing is manage your habitat and and if you're riding on the trail I mean that will be you know that's something different but at home don't pasture your horses in in wooded areas mm -hmm. maybe temporary fencing to keep them out of the brush um, you might have to use a, a pesticide like a perimeter spray that's safe for for everything every kind of creature you're, you're you've got people kids dogs horses whatever um, keep the property clear of, of brush and overgrowth and lawn, lawn trimmings and that sort of thing because places where ticks would live and, and breathe and breed and all that stuff. Um, the second thing is then, I think this is the trail, trail appropriate part, is the products. So when you're picking a product that is um, to repel ticks, use something that says ticks on the label. Mm -hmm. um, then the best product it appears if you if you don't go with a natural product is is a permethrin permethrin looks like i mean it has the best evidence that it it repels ticks so and if you go to like the um cdc or the nih website for human tips because it's also very important that you don't get ticks um, they'll tell you to spray your clothes down outside with with the permethrin based product um, Spraying your clothes down, and also you can spray your horse's boots down. If you can go really heavy on things like your horse's boots and your shoes, is mm -hmm. a good way for you to kind of avoid having to douse yourself or your horse in permethrin, because obviously on your skin. some of those right. things can be right. a pro and a con. And they tell you concentrate because the ticks aren't like flying; they don't have wings; they're not jumping. What they're doing is it's really cool. They have eight legs, right? So on a blade of grass or a leaf of something, they hang on with their six bottom legs and they stick their two top legs out and they wait for you to walk by and then they catch your pant leg or your horse leg or whatever. Terrible. So they, they say to concentrate your product on um, the horse's legs or the, the underbelly and then I changed that to undercarriage, which made me think of a car wash. You know, when you're getting <laughs> the salt off your car. Yep. So think of that. Think of ticks are coming from the ground up. They're always seeking up and um, they're, they're finding the movement and the vibration and the heat and the carbon dioxide and they've got those two front legs out and they're just catching on. But if you've got a product, something low, they're less likely to, to be attracted to your horse then. Yeah. So that's and good. If you have your horse out in an area where you think he's grazing, um, like my horse, we go back and graze in some parts of the uh, property that we definitely get ticks when we go mm. back there. So I use a little roll on around okay. his muzzle okay. so, because they will absolutely crawl right on the face because yeah. he's, he's in there. And so once, <laughs> they, once they do crawl on, the places they like, they prefer, they have um, not much hair, so thin hair, and also thin skin. Mm -hmm. So 
the head, ears, the throat latch. So the underside of horses, the um, the armpits, yep, and the, uh, the groin area. So where the legs attach, those mm -hmm. are big areas. They also like to crawl into the mane and tail. It's very thin skin when you get in there deep, and it's protected. And so you might find a lot of ticks in a mane and tail, and and. The best way to find them, because now we're on the tick check portion of the program, mm -hmm. is not looking so much, because it might be the same color as your horse, but it's getting your fingers and nails in there and, and, and like feeling, which yeah. sounds a little gross, but you gotta do it. All right, so now we're on the removal portion. Let's say you find one. Um, there's a lot of old wives' tales out there about what to do. I just heard five minutes ago. Not for me. <laughs> not for her. Um, put dish soap on it with a cotton ball and smother them. N n er, we need like a buzzer. Yeah. Um, I've heard put something hot on them yeah. anywhere from the Heat hot up a knife. knife. Yeah. I've heard a, a, like light a match and let it burn out and then put that on him. Even a cigarette butt. No, 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 no. None of those things. Don't twist them. Don't crush them. No. Nope. Just take a device, tweezers. We sell this thing called Tick Ease, which has two different ends for ease. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just grab onto them as near the head you can and slowly and firmly and steadily and quietly and calmly, no need to panic, just pull straight out. When you've got them out, you don't have to then cut them or crush them or burn them or do anything. Just have a little jar of rubbing alcohol and put them in it. And then if it gets full, throw it away or dispose of it properly. Um, it's, it's nothing that you have to get excited about or one, one really good thing is you want to do your tick checks every day and every, after every ride. Yep. So if, once, if your horse is exposed to a place where ticks are gonna you know, climb on, then, then do your tick check. And it takes about 36 hours or a full day and a half for a, an attached tick to begin releasing the bacteria or the protozoa or whatever disease he has in him or her, her I think, um, into the body. So when they're crawling, nothing has happened. And right. even when they've just attached, nothing has happened. So no, you don't have to hurry. Just pull them out and dispose of them quietly. Now, I remember back in when I was a kid and my horse had lots of ticks, that they do form, there is a, lo a, lo a, a local reaction around the bite and they even, it, they can ooze and crust and drain some serum. So you may have to do a little um, clean up and in some cases even like hot pack for like mm -hmm. an abscess because it's it's painful and it gets big and. Some horses have a release from Yeah, response, and yeah. I, you know, I kind of wonder why that was and I, I did read that um, tick saliva has agents in it to help it get its meal. Mm. I'm trying to think of a way to say that that's not really, um, yeah. So they have some anticoagulants mm -hmm. in their saliva. They have to, they have histamine. They have all sorts of substances that that are designed to make tissue angry, and they do a good job of it. So mm -hmm. maybe the first time you you remove a tick and you see that reaction, ask your vet what would be the best thing to clean it up with and to put on there. Because again, there's lots of old wives' tales, um, and then and then you just know when you remove a tick, just, just do that every time. So it's not, it's not a really big deal. And the reason you don't want to do any of the old wives' tales mm. to get the ticks off is because that can actually do more harm than good. B because before you remove the tick, they can do things like regurgitate back into sure. the bite. You're making them angry. Yes. Angry ticks are not good ticks. Nope. You do not want to deal with an angry tick. No. Um, do I know when we talked about the products, we talked about the permethrin, which you can use, you know, on the spot and as you go. Um, but we do also have a product back there, Equispot. Yeah, we have a couple of spot-on products. These have really good reviews as far as tick control. Like people say, I used to always have lots of ticks, and then I use these products, and I don't have ticks anymore. These work differently than sprays and roll-ons, yes, though. Yes, for sure. They're about 14 days that you put them on and don't do anything and then reapply in 14 days. It's important not to mix and match your products, so mm -hmm. don't do both. If you think you need both, talk to your vet first and show them the products you're using because there can be some interaction between the agents in these products and the agents in sprays and roll-ons. Mm -hmm. So they're not, you don't use everything. Pick one and that's, that's what you use.